Hello, welcome to Cap Tech. The purpose of this YouTube channel is to show Civil Air Patrol members how we can use the different software and programs that are available to us to enhance our mission operations. In today's video, we'll be talking about how we can use Google Earth to help create plans for our aerial photography missions. If you're anything like my Civil Air Patrol wing, one of the biggest problems is we get tasking from a customer to take aerial photography, but you have to organize it and present it in a format that is easy for a crew member to understand. To help that, we created this, this uh, program, or I should say this form called a target card. In it, it has the target mission number, the Civil Air Patrol grid coordinates, target name and description, three separate types of coordinates, so it doesn't, depending on what type of GPS you may have, you have all the different formats already available, no need to convert, any questions that the customer would like to have answered, and then a Google Earth screenshot of the target itself. Now this is a really great tool for a crew member to have when they're flying around. The problem is it's very task intensive and very time consuming for the planning section to make these. If you have 50 or 100 targets, it can take you over a day to go through this process. And with somebody typing in all the different latitude and longitude coordinates, people can make mistakes. So I'm gonna show you today how we can use Google Earth to make something very similar to this and make our lives a lot easier. First thing you're gonna need is Google Earth. It's a free program for download. Once you're in there, you can create under My Places where it says Civil Air Patrol Missions. That's what I've created. You can call it whatever you want. Once you've created the area that you're going to put your missions, you can further add another folder and title it with the mission number. Whatever the mission number that has been assigned. And down here, we can add different pieces of information, such as perhaps the IC's name or anything else that may be important to the mission. Once we hit OK, that has been created. And that'll be our folder for all the different information for this aerial photography mission. To break it down further, what we can do is add another folder for the day that we plan to execute the mission. So if we were planning for tomorrow's mission, we would put in the 27th of October, 2018 then add any descriptions that you would want to put in here, such as perhaps uh, we could call this our air targets, if we knew that these were going to be air targets for photography, or maybe perhaps ground targets if we knew it was going to be a ground target, having our ground teams take pictures, and create OK once again. Now, anything we place in this file, we know that we can pass from the planning section over to the ops section on that day, and it's very clearly labeled the day and whether it's air versus ground targets. So, the next thing we can do is click right click one more time and add a place mark. And now, what we can do, we can go back to our target card uh, and look at our target card that we have. So it was target T001. We'll go back to Google and type in T their name here, T001. And now we can go back and select our latitude here, copy, and paste. And then we can select our longitude here and copy. and paste, and we will accept any format of coordinates. From here, we can also select the marker, the place marker. I like to use these little arrows and change the color based on the day. So for today, we'll use a green arrow. We can type in now any questions that the customer may have given us, such as this one here. Is anyone working at the facility today? We can copy and paste that in. We can add other questions, such as, is there any damage 
we were doing a disaster response mission. And we can hit OK. Now it's been plotted on there. And if we click there, there's our questions, and there's our target. If we wanted to, we can zoom in on the target and get a really good look at it on Google Earth without actually having to snip it and put it into some other format right there. Pretty simple. Now, if you're lucky enough and have a customer that gives you a list, an Excel spreadsheet, or some sort of Microsoft document that you can convert into an Excel spreadsheet of all the targets, even better. Then you don't have to put every single one in by hand. We can import this spreadsheet into Google Earth. It's important that you know that this has to be a .csv file. That's very important. Google really doesn't like any other type of file when you import it. So in this case, we've got our latitudes and our longitudes given to us by the customer. So we'll go back to Google. We'll select Import. And we'll go to our desktop where I have it saved. And there's our target list. Notice it accepts CSV or text files. That's what it prefers. And we'll open it. Google's going to go through and ask us a bunch of questions. No big deal. Most of the things I, I don't bother with, but you can go through and select different ways to have it import to customize it. But the default seems to work just fine. We select Finish. It asks me, do you want to apply the style template? Yes, I want to use the style template. That is my default. We'll just click through that. There's my template I have for my target list. Now, under my temporary places, I now have target list that's been imported for me. The nice thing about this is I can drill down and here are all the targets. If I check here, they will all become highlighted as little dots because of the way I have my style template set up. Now what I can do is I can select on the first one, I can right click, go to properties, and now I can put a name on it. But what is it? The customer didn't tell me. Not a problem. I can zoom in. And now I see, look at that, it's a highway bridge. Highway bridge. And then down here in the description, I can then put in any kind of comments, such as any questions that the customer may have. And I can change the marker now by changing it to the current day's marker, the one I'm planning with. That's how I know I've completed this one. And when I'm done, I'll hit OK, and I can simply drag and drop up to the day. And now I have that in there. We could go down the, so you can either name it its actual name, or you can use its target identifier, whichever you prefer. And we can go down this list and do that for all of them. Works out fairly well. The next step in all of this is saving it as a KML file, so that way we can upload it to Wimmers. We right click on our day, we can go to save place as. Now it's very important here that we select KML file because the ultimate goal is to import all this into four flight, which is what the vast majority of us in Civil Air Patrol use. So I've selected KML file, I've selected my desktop as a place to save it, and I select save. And there it is, save, no problem. The next step is to take this file and upload it to Wimmers so the aircrew can actually access it for that day. If I go over to my Wimmers, this may look familiar to many of you in Civil Air Patrol, this is my mission and the mission information page, one of the main pages in Wimmers. I simply select in the mission files here. From here, I can choose the folder in which I want to load it in. In this case, I'm going to load it under target instructions. Select Choose File, back to my desktop. I select the file with the date there and upload. And that's all there is to it. There has been uploaded. In the next video, we'll show you how to take this file and download it into ForeFlight for use on our mission. If you have any questions about this, feel free. Feel free to put something in the comments section. I'll be happy to answer as best I can. Thanks for watching.